Hey, what's up, what's up? Welcome to a brand new season of Asia Rugby Live, Real Talk, Real Rugby. Of course, this is episode one of the brand new season. And I am so excited to bring you some exciting, you know, former players, uh, current players, you know, just to talk about rugby, to keep on the conversation going, uh, to talk about rugby, bringing rugby to your doorstep if you are at home or probably in the office, just, you know, picking your telephone, open it, opening us up, watching us on Asia Rugby Live. Thank you for being with us. Uh, in Malaysia, it is evening, 3 o'clock. In uh, Thailand, it's about 2 o'clock. And, and, you know, wherever you are, wherever you are, thank you for being with us. And, of course, uh, uh, please like and subscribe A Asia Rugby Live YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, our social media pages. And don't forget to uh, press on the notification button, which is the bell button, so that you can receive notifications of uh, future contents from Asia Rugby Live. And, of course, there's a lot of news if you go to asiarugby.com. Just a few news that I want to update uh, on you guys. Of course, the rugby law trials is to be implemented globally starting the 1st of June. That is really, really exciting where we have we are taking some rugby league laws into the game of unions. So that will be interesting uh, when the 5022 rules is being implemented together with some uh, player welfare rules uh, going to be implemented soon. So check it out. Uh, and, and of course... Uh, if you go to asianrugby.com, you can see that uh, Hong Kong 7, Singapore 7, and Dubai 7 state has been confirmed for this year. This year, okay? Yes, the pandemic is still around, but the, the, these tournaments are going on. And of course, one of the tournaments that everyone is looking forward to is the Olympics. So, which is just around the corner, which is happening next week. And we have some uh, few exciting people, few, you know, I, I guess uh, I would say uh, th these people would uh, know what to talk about in terms of the Olympics. So let me introduce the first person uh, from all the way from New Zealand. She's up, it's in the evening for her, but you know, she's agreed to come on with us on Asia Rugby Live. First of all, is Kayla Aki, formerly known as, you would know her, know her as uh, Kayla McAllister. Mm -hmm. Kayla, uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, how you been and in house things on your side? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'm currently based in France um, with my husband, Peter, but I've been back in New Zealand for about four months with my two daughters just to um, get away from the lockdown and the whole COVID situation and get back to New Zealand amongst some freedom. Um, but he's here now as well for two weeks and we head back to France on the 4th of August. So, yeah. So can you, can you speak a little bit of French now? Do you know how to speak French? Um, the basics? I can uh, order my groceries and my petrol and the odd conversations, but not fluent, unlike Peter. Uh, but yeah, it's a difficult <laughs> language, but no, it's, it's good. That's good. That's good. Good to have you here. And uh, for those who don't know, uh, Kayla was in the uh, New Zealand squad when they won the silver medal at Rio Olympics. So. Uh, Kayla, I, I haven't congratulated you in person, so congratulations for the silver medal. And uh, it's not too late, I guess, to congratulate you, right? So, yeah, here's my congratulations <clears throat> to you. And and hopefully, probably this year, the New Zealand team will bring something better. Who knows? Uh, anyway, yes. uh, the next person I would like to introduce to you is he's currently based in Thailand. He's a Kiwi, uh, Lotte Rakambula, who is also the head coach of uh thailand and he is no stranger to the seventh circuit and also the seventh format game so lotte uh bula mana how you been how's uh, how's things on your end and uh are, are you are you relaxing in your in your home right now in, in thailand sorry cup sorry cup uh all yeah all is good uh over here in thailand good to be back again on the show uh and give back to to the game that we love uh, yeah, I would say relaxing. I would say it's, it's been frustrating, uh, you know, trying to plan things and, uh, you know, you set some, some stuff ready to go and then COVID uh, changed things around. But, uh, but yeah, all is good. Uh, weather is good here in Thailand. I highly recommend when the border opens up, please do come to Thailand, mate. <laughs> Uh, Saudi Cup, Cup Punka, of course, we'll come to Thailand. I'm just, I'm just next door, mate. So when, whenever Thailand decides to open its border, I'll be the first one to come to Thailand. Yeah, well. visit you in Thailand. <laughs> and anyway, not too far away, which is uh, the same time zone as we. Uh, we have Natasha Olsen, who is 
uh, who ha- who is representing Hong Kong in sevens and fifteens. Natasha, uh, you guys missed out on the you know uh, Olympic repechage. Uh, it's I, I guess it's um, too bad that you guys missed out. Um, unlucky on your part uh, on the team's part but but i guess life goes on there's a lot there's a lot that you you can look forward to which is the seven series and whatnot but on your end uh, first of all how have you been how's things uh, is going on for you in in hong kong yeah things are good we just got back um we're actually on a break right now because we got back from the qualifier and we've just been kind of relaxing and replenishing and just spending times with friends and family um and then we Go back to we go back into the office. We go back to the pitch next week, and we start again building towards events like the ARC in 15s and the Asian Seven Series. So it's all good, getting ready ready to go again. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, right? And and you know, talking about the Olympics, uh, like like I said, it's you know, it's just happening around the corner. It's happening next week. And Natasha, you just got back uh, a, a couple a few weeks ago from from Monaco from the Olympic repechage uh, tournament. Uh, unlucky. The thing about the thing about this tournament is uh, three Asia teams went to the semi-finals. All um, got unlucky. Didn't go through into the final. If not, I think would have seen a couple of you know Asian teams in uh, in the Olympics together with the current teams uh, right now. But you know, and all being said and done, I think the effort that uh, you guys put on the show that you guys put on in Monaco has been really great Tasha and moving forward you know from a player's perspective who has competed in the recent tournament uh, the rapid charge in Monaco uh, how exciting uh, are you looking forward to to watching the Olympics of course I'm excited to watch the Olympics you know it's a tournament that only comes around every four years and we had to wait a little bit extra this time but it's exciting to see especially how China and Japan are going to do against Australia, who won the gold uh, gold last time round, but also some of the other stronger top tier teams. So it's really quite exciting to see how far we can go or how far Asia can go. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they play. Yeah, for sure. Right. And uh, there's a few players and, uh, and, and also the, the teams that we want to talk about probably after this. But uh, Kayla, you, you've been through that process, right? You've been through uh that that whole you know olympic journey and and also getting your silver medal uh at, in as as someone who has played the game uh, in the olympics before um so what do you think of this whole thing uh, in terms of excite excitement are you are, are, are you excited to see that, that the olympics is happening next week yeah i guess last year would have um been tough for the athletes because <clears throat> you do prep for four years the big goal so I guess nothing changes. They still train and carry on, but um, being a part of the last Olympics is actually <clears throat> so bigger than bigger than rugby. I guess um, because you're a part of your actual country. So for me, you know, it was special being in the sevens team. But for me, it was actually the Olympic New Zealand Olympic team. Uh, being inside other athletes, the top athletes in your country, and then actually being amongst the world's best. Um, but for sevens, you know, it was huge. And the girls, I know this time around, having that extra year buffer to to get better, faster, stronger, fitter is, is you know, it sucked that it didn't happen last year and it, it's devastating, but it's gone ahead just around the corner. So it's actually given the girls more time to prep, which is actually, you know, I think it's more beneficial uh, for athletes, but it is tough because you do, it's four to five years of your life, basically. So, you know, it's exciting. It's not far away. Well, you mentioned just now that you know there's there's one year for the for the teams to prepare to be better, to be faster, to be stronger. Do you think the teams will be stronger and faster uh, than we've ever seen before, Kayla? Uh, personally, yes. I think with it being postponed uh, as an athlete, you know, the first couple of weeks or months, it may may be tough to get over because people want to plan and. You know, after the four-year cycle, you plan for, for women, especially families, babies, marriages. You know, it's it's a it's a, it's a long time. So, and I think the girls have flipped that, especially the New Zealand girls, to its motivation. Um, and they have got fitter, faster, stronger, um, more. I guess for New Zealand, it's been tough in terms of competition. We haven't had much rugby um, compared to the rest of the world and the repechage tournaments and the. The other nations but for new zealand they've you know they've had a couple of oh well they train against each other and that's actually sometimes harder than playing opposition to be honest but um yeah i think you know they're ready they've played a couple of games against australia and 
So I think in terms of the the women's team that will be there in the Olympics, they've played footy considering the last year with the with the COVID. They've most most teams have had some footy behind them the last six months. So I guess yeah, it is an extra year of getting you know work ons and, and getting better. So it will be it'll be pretty good, pretty a pretty good tournament, uh, men's and women's. Uh, Lottie, from your perspective, Lottie, um, what what do you think we can expect uh, to see in this year's Olympics? Uh, well, that's that's a great question. Uh, it's uh, it's not like a normal tournament now. Um, like uh, right now, I'm sure all coaches in there are still nervous about whether this, you know, will still go ahead uh, with uh, the numbers of cases still going around the village. So. I think they really want to play and everyone wants to get out there and play. Uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, I'm looking looking at, you know, I'm worried about the, the minnows, you know, the, the small team. So, because now, uh, as we talked about earlier on, there was no, now there, will, there won't be any, any crowd. So big teams, the likes of Fiji, you know, they get pumped up and uh, get excited, you know, a bit of uh, fuel in the fire for them and their families, you know, is screaming at them uh, from the grandstand. But this time it's... It's totally different. So Japan is going to be tough. Uh, so I'm expecting the small small teams to put on a really good fight. So uh, it's going to be interesting uh, and very exciting for us. But I'm I will go all the way to the end. I'm hoping that there won't be any interruptions because there's a lot of sacrifice, as Kayla mentioned, that goes behind the scene. Yeah, for sure. I four years was the original time of wait. And now they they waited five years, I reckon, for yeah. the tournament to happen. So yeah, it's a yeah. long wait, right? Uh, yeah. and let's let's look at the grouping um, of of each uh, men's and women's category. So for the men's team, of course, uh, we have three pools each uh, in Pool A: New Zealand, Russia, uh, Great Britain, and Canada. This is for the women's category. Yeah? Pool Pool B: uh, Canada, France, Fiji, and Brazil. And Pool C. Ha, huh, double whammy, China and Japan are in the same group together with USA and Australia. Meanwhile, in the men's category, uh, Pool A, uh, New Zealand team, Australia, Argentina and South Korea. So that's from uh, the Asian team. And I think from the second, I, we missed it, Japan is in Pool C. So it's going to happen on the 26th of July till the 31st of July. Uh, at Tokyo Stadium where the Rugby World Cup was uh, final was held in uh, 2019. So that's going to be exciting. It's a really nice uh, stadium. But Lottie mentioned just now, then there won't be any crowd. It will be a, an empty stadium. Probably just like uh, the World Cup, the Rugby World Cup 7s in Russia back in 2013. Sure? Yeah. yeah. Kayla, can you relate to that? <laughs> Well, for the female, we don't get big crowds, the, the women, yeah. so um, it's quite, quite good when we tag on the side of a men's tournament, we actually get a crowd, so, um, but there, it wasn't too bad, there was a couple, there was, there was half. It was good on the final day, it was good on the final day. <laughs> yeah, Lottie, Lottie, you were there as well, right, 2013 uh, Rugby yeah. World Cup Finals in, in Moscow, oh, yeah, 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 I still yeah, remember, was there, there wasn't any crowd, Natasha, were you there? Just, I, I'm not sure. No. Sorry, Natasha. <laughs> you, you were not there, right? Okay. No. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a good what eight years ago. You would have yeah. been really young. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Oh, thank so. You. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, continuing on with the discussion between uh, the men's and the women's uh, category. Probably we can start with the women's first. Uh, Kayla, you you see just now the the pools uh, of of all the teams. Uh, in in for the women's category and uh, China and Japan they have a tough uh, uh, I guess mission ahead of them they are in the same pool so uh, what do you reckon are the chances for these two teams especially from Asia I, I guess uh, it's it's a different tournament it's a one off um, so anything can happen and that actually happened in Rio as well it's not like the World Series or you know it's everyone has to bring their A game so I. I mean, I'm not really, I don't even have a top four, to be honest, apart from backing the Kiwis, but, you know, they can, they can push, um, you know, I, I don't know how it works if it's top two, but, or three, but um, the opportunity is there to grab it and, and go with it. So it's, it's a unknown for all teams. So everyone is on the same page. Um, so it's up for grabs for any team, to be honest. So 
huge opportunity for the for Japan and China, and I guess that match alone will be a good tussle. Uh, um, lean towards more Japan because I have some friends in Japan, um, but I don't, I don't know. It'll be a, a good one, I guess. Just like the <laughs> New Zealand Australia rivalry is the same with probably China and Japan, but no, that, that'll be tough. But I mean, at the end of the day, anyone can go through, so it's just taking each game by, by its a one by one, and and yeah, we'll be interesting to see what happens. Looking back from the Ocean Oceania Sevens, uh, we've seen before the you know a lot of these teams who were competing, you know the likes of New Zealand, Australia. Uh, what do you reckon are the you know general chances? Who do you think we can see in the final, um, Kela? I know you're going to ask me this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, I'm going Black Ferns for gold. I just think this current team, the culture, um, the the learnings from the last Olympic campaign, the changes in the team, and and I guess the the five years of hard work and sacrifice, I I think they're going to be unstoppable. But I, who will be in the final? I you know there's the handful. Um, but personally, I, I I wouldn't. Yeah, there's there's the French or the, or the World Circuit. I guess the big teams. But with COVID, obviously there's been no World Series, so it's a bit of an unknown uh, what the other teams are like and and what they're going to bring. So. That in itself is a bit a bit of the unknown, but I personally I wouldn't. Yeah, the the, the French um, have had a lot of rugby, and then obviously USA. We haven't seen much of them, and, and they'll be working hard in the background and back home where they are. So I don't know. It's going to be tough, but yeah, especially the top four, and obviously Great Britain. I wouldn't rule them out because they've had some you know some player changes and and to their whole system as well and and program. So and then the likes of China and Japan. Um, with resources in the last five years as well. So it'll be tough, uh, uh, but I'm probably going to go Black Ferns in the final for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know against two yet. I'm not, I'm, maybe after day one, I'll, I'll make the call. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you again then. <laughs> Tasha, <laughs> Tasha uh, okay, you know you know what? You as a player, especially based in Asia, you've, you've uh, you know, um, you went head to head with you know the likes of uh, China and and Japan. So what do you reckon are their chances in this Olympics, Tasha? Well, I think both teams have a pretty good chance. It's just who's going to turn up and perform on the day, and they've got to take each game game by game. Like it really is, it's an opportunity for everyone to just go out and play. So I'm quite excited to see how both teams do. Like. Japan is a very technically skillful team. They've got really good tackling technique. They've got uh, they've got great offloading skills and they're really steppy. They're not necessarily the biggest team, but they've got a lot of heart. Whereas China, they've got you know some of the best passing and width to width game in Asia. So both teams they have their own strengths and I think they'll perform well. Also, they've all they both teams have played in the World Series. So China was there for one year and Japan has played a couple times. So both of them have experience against these teams. So it'll be interesting to see how they play uh, going forward. Yeah, definitely right. And Lottie, uh, you, as I would say, as a sevens group, a sevens coach now. So what's your observation of uh, China and Japan? What do you reckon? Uh, they are in the same group, right? And do you, do you think there's a chance of them both um, qualifying for the knockout rounds? Oh, um. Yeah, like the girls were saying, you know, it's sevens rugby. You know, that's the beauty about the game, you know, whoever turns up on the day. Uh, I'm just gutted and I'm just disappointed that they were both put on the same pool. Uh, you know, it would be good for it would be good for, for us, you know, over this part of the world to see them, uh, you know, in a different pool. But uh, I guess uh, that's it. And uh, now it comes down to, yeah, wh whoever turns up on the day. Uh, I know they've been working hard, really hard, and I've seen, you know, during the the series a uh, couple of years ago, they've, you know, they well coached team, uh, well drilled, a lot of resources, like uh, Kayla was saying, uh, definitely a lot of resources there. So, uh, yeah, it comes down to preparation and that final prep, uh, and and also what what's going on at the moment, like COVID, you know, managed to change, uh, you know, from Plan A to Plan B. So that's also going to be crucial going in. Uh, okay, Let, let's move on to the men's um, category, and uh, we, we've seen just now that Korea and Japan are in the men's category. So, what do you reckon, Lottie, are their chances in this Olympics? 
oh, <laughs> like it's an Olympic. Uh, you know, you, you know, everyone gets up for that. Uh, you don't need the coach to talk, uh, you know, to motivate you or get you up. So, uh, you know, and, and and the likes, like I said, you know, they are very dangerous. This this men of rugby nation team, they're, you know, they're really dangerous because it's easy to get up. Like uh, as a former player, it's easy, it's easy to get up when you're playing against, uh, you know, a big big team. But teams like this, like Japan, Korea, oh, you know, they can do wonders in this uh, this events. And they showed, Japan showed it in the last Olympics uh, when they beat New Zealand in their first game in Rio. So, I, you know, <laughs> I know Korea, you know, there's a lot of uh, players in that Korean side play professional rugby in Japan. So, you know, I'm nervous for, for our boys, the New Zealand boys. I'm really nervous for them because <laughs> those Korean boys are big boys. You know, I saw them on the circuit. Man, they are big boys and they know, you know, they're very professional uh, in terms of preparation. So, and now playing against the, the black jersey, mm -hmm. you know, oh, easy for them to get up. So, you know, but I'm backing my boys. I'm backing the, the, the man in black, uh, you know, to, uh, they've, <laughs> they've gone through tough times, especially in Rio. Uh, there's a lot of challenges there. So I'm backing them to, uh, similar to Kayla, you know, just picking, uh, I don't care who they play against the final, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay just uh, so we were talking about the teams at asia what about as a whole uh of uh, the tournament you, you know you have the likes of the top teams australia you have uh france over there you have uh, great britain um you know in, in the olympics so what do you reckon who do you think that we're going to see in the final Toti? uh well as, as i mentioned it before yeah well definitely the boys in in black you know, they'll be there, but uh, you know, the, Fiji's there. Uh, you know, the current uh, gold uh, gold medalist. So, and they've uh, they've brought in some some stars up in Europe. Uh, but you know, they're 15s boys. So, uh, and then there's Australia, who's uh, in the same pool as New Zealand. Uh, they, you know, they are biggest rivalry. So, they're always tough when they play against the New Zealand team, or when we play against Australia. It's in any sport. It's always tough. Uh, but, you know, there's also South Africa. South Africa is also there too. So it's really hard yeah. to, you know, to put on, uh, on you know, <laughs> a team for, for this one. Uh, but like I said, I'm confident. The only reason I'm confident with uh, with the man in black because I know what they've been doing and the sacrifice they've been doing. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping South Africa will have their coach back in time because I want this to be an even contest. You know, I know right. he's in, a, yeah, he's going through quarantine. I'm hoping that he will make it. Uh, on time for on the sideline. So I guess you've been in contact with your uh, Fijian brother Tomasi Tama back in the New Zealand camp, huh? <laughs> feeding you the stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I keep uh, you know almost uh, yeah well, every, every every day I uh, you know send a message out to them just asking you know how's it going you know I'm more nervous for them than anything and they they're telling me oh bro it's all good we're gonna be alright we're gonna be alright. So, I'm just excited for them, and I, I also I'm excited for everyone, you know, because it's been a long wait, and uh, and this is good to see some uh, competitive, uh, you know, sports back, you know, with going through the pandemic. Kayla, so from there we can see that Lottie misses it so much. He misses, he misses the system so much. He misses the boys so much. What what about you? Do you miss your seven sisters? Yeah, I do. Um, I mean, I try to I try to come back last year. And then this like global pandemic hit. So anyway, sorry. Okay, Kayla, Kayla got cut off a little bit. <laughs> okay, no worries, no worries. You know what? While waiting for Kayla to come back on, we have the um, the comments and also the interviews from uh, Charlie Lo, which is the. Uh, Korea men's head coach. Let's see what Chadi has to say about the Olympics. It's been it's been a challenge. Uh, we just had to restart at the very beginning again and get all the players uh, on board, uh, make sure we had all the right players, and uh, and then slowly start the process, um, and and then slowly start educating the players in what we needed to and what was going to be required in order to to co be competitive at the olympics it'll give us um a idea exactly where we are with regard to our preparation um and uh, it'll be able it's an opportunity for the players to test themselves against some of the best teams in the world 
who will be, uh, all those teams are going to be participating at the Tokyo Olympics. So, so I think that there's two components, and then if you add in the fitness component as well, and and the players competing for uh, spots on the on the roster uh, to go to Tokyo, which allows allows the players to to actually get it get stuck in and 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 show what they can do. The atmosphere in the camp is probably the best it's ever been. I mean, I think the coaching staff have done a really good job of making sure. Uh, we're working high. It's a really high pressure environment. Like Charlie said, we're competing for a roster spot. So um, you would think that might cause some uh, disruption, but actually everyone's just working to the same goal, which is really nice. Uh, since the Asian series, um, we've gone through a new selection period. So trial matches and, and over a course of a few months. And um, Charlie's made it clear that experience and age doesn't matter. It's just it's just what you put the performances on the pitch. So we've actually had a few changes from that uh, Asian qualifier series and uh, brought in some youth and, and the guys are gelling really well. And um, I think we've got a really nice balance of youth and experience. And then I think the important thing this weekend is just to see where we're at. And uh, yeah, just just I think a lot of those teams will be comp competing for medals. So for us, hopefully we can come away from this weekend with and take away a lot of confidence. That's the goal for the weekend. And that's it, guys, from Charlie Lo and Andre Jin, the vice captain of the Korean men's team. And, and from that, I think, uh, you know, like, like a lot of these, you know, this uh, Minos team, I, I would categorize them. They are something that anyone can't overlook, like, a lot of, like you guys also mentioned that uh, in the Olympics, no one can overlook any team. Anyone can turn out any day, any time, and, and beat probably the best of teams uh, before this, right? And and so from what Charlie said just now, Lottie, um, can, you, can, you, can you relate to his sentiment towards the Olympic? Yeah, um, it's like, it's a pinnacle. And, and, and you wanted to take all the boxes, like you want to be the fittest team. Uh, going into this tournament, you want to be the strongest team. You want to be the fastest, you know. So, and powerful. So, as a, as a coaching staff, that's you know that's that's probably the main thing. You looked at it because it gives uh, gives you a lot of options. Uh, and then from there, then you go into selections in terms of uh, you know uh, instinct and game awareness. Uh, and just like one of the other players was saying, you know, and and that's exactly what they have to go through. Uh, being put in a really stressful environment, tough, compete for a spot because, as we all mentioned it before, you know this only comes around every four years, and and it's going to be very, really tough. You know, everyone brings their A game. Uh, it's not like a series where you play them again uh, in another couple of weeks. So, you know, like he's 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 bang on right uh, that he wants to be, you know, the best in everything uh, and hardworking team as well going into this competition. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what all the coaches are doing right now, preparing themselves going into this, uh, this Olympics. So that's why I, I was saying like, it's going to be a really interesting tournament. Uh, yeah, I, I've never seen anything like this, any sevens tournament build up like this with the pandemic around, uh, no crowds. Uh, it's just pretty much going into an unknown, you know, hardly seen any teams play. Some are very lucky to play some games going into this. So it's very exciting for us watching. And, and Tasha, uh, you know, reflecting on what uh, Andre Jin's uh, head or, or probably what he's going through right now, you you have been through, uh, you know, probably the Rugby World Cup uh, in 2017, uh, probably a similar um, big event in your life. So what do you think is going through his head right now, Tasha? Well, you think about what well, well, what we're going through my head is I would be thinking about okay, just making sure that I'm in the right head space and when it and not overplaying the games in my head, not trying to think too far ahead, because uh, you don't want to overplay the game before you even get to the pitch. And at that point, when you do get on the field, you just want to get there and you just want to play. So probably building up now, of course, it's making sure you're physically right, you're mentally right. You're getting the right nutrition, you're getting your, your sleep in, uh, you're getting recovery processes going. So it's just making sure you're doing all the small little things so that when it does actually get to game day, you're ready and you're eager to go. Yeah, that's good. I think uh, I think all of us can relate to that. Um, probably this is one of the big events 
that one can go through in their life. And you know what? I just want to come back to Kayla as now before Kayla got cut off. So Kayla, can can you tell us? <laughs> so you miss your seven sisters? Can you tell us back? Miss the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Sars, man. Um, <laughs> members are on the Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, I do miss them a lot. I miss, you know, the competitive environment. And... Oh, man. She got Uh-oh. Cut again. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, never mind. We can come back to Kayla probably at the end of the show on that. Does she miss her uh, seven sisters? Anyway, okay, now we have the head coach of China, Ewan McIntosh. Uh, comments on the upcoming Olympics. Uh, let's roll it. The simple way to look at it, I guess, for us is we're sitting currently in, in that third spot in the pool ranking-wise. And, um, you know, if you want to go top eight, um, you've got to make sure that you beat beat someone in your pool and you've got to push other teams and hope to get other victories. And I think for us, our, our target's always been we want to aim for that top eight. Um, and, you know, as I said, you could sit and go around in circles about which teams you're going to get if you play this team, that team. And, Ultimately, our focus remains the same as we've we've got to focus to to make that top eight. And um, yeah, it's I think it's definitely doable. It's going to be a, be a challenge. Obviously, we've got Japan, who are the the host nation, so it adds a bit of um, bit of spice to that one. And then um, yeah, Australia, obviously, they're the current current uh, gold medalists. Um, and then USA have always been pushing in that around that top four mark, and sometimes been ranked higher than four. So it's it's a tough pool, but there isn't really an easy pool out there. So. So some players will rise to that challenge and 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 get excited about it and put the pressure on Australia in their own head. And you might get other players that, yeah, I think that that's when when we're playing a team sport, you've got a, a lot of different individuals there with that will focus on things in different lights. But I guess my my job is to to try and get them to really embrace the challenge and and not and um, not put too much pressure on themselves and really put that pressure back. For example, if we, when we play against Australia, it's well they're they're the current gold medalists, so the pressure is really on them. So there you go, guys. There's, uh, according to Ewan, Ewan McIntosh, the head coach of China's sevens women's team, um, they don't have any pressure. They don't feel any pressure, probably. I, I think, of course, the pressure will be there. Um, right, Tasha? As in, you are going to the Olympics. You are playing against the big, these big teams, but probably the pressure to win is more on the big teams like Australia, New Zealand and whatnot. So what do you reckon, Tasha, on what Ewan has to say on, on the Olympics? Yeah, of course they've got the, like, their target would be to make the top eight. But to do that, it's just, it's like he said, just making sure that they do the small things well and um, they just stick to their processes. Because, of course, they, the pressure will be there, but that means the pressure is off uh, them to do, like, the pressure is on the other teams to perform and make sure they win. So coming from an underdog, that kind of relieves a lot of the pressure on them. And they can just have fun and play and just try things. Cool. And, and Lottie, going, you know, as a coach, uh, and, and probably you can you can relate to what Ewan said just now about, you know, there's not much pressure, especially with the deep, small, small teams like China. What do you reckon? Like, you are the head coach of, and going to a tournament against these, you know, big boys or big girls, <laughs> uh, nations. Um, how how would you think that uh, you, you're going to manage your players and also your team going to tournaments like this? Yeah, or, uh, yeah. I, I would. Yeah, our main focus, if I, if in that, if if I put myself in their shoe, would be, you know, preparation and just do what we usually do and control what we can control. So, uh, I guess you know, as a coach, you, you want to be the most relaxed person around the group. So, and the players, uh, the players feed off that. If you're stressed out, then they will be stressed out. So, I think you try and be, uh, you know make everything as simple as possible uh even your information i know some you know some coaches get carried away coming up with the big events you know they try and you know throw some more new stuff in there uh, that they've never seen it before so they can complicate things up uh as you know when you know come back from players point of view you know we like it nice and simple uh the less you know uh, pressure to think about many things the you know the the better it, it becomes for, for everyone. So, you know, preparation is the key and just keep it nice and simple and really relaxed. You know, they've worked out for four years to, 
to, to get there. So there's no point, you know, complicating things up again. So uh, that would be what I do, you know, just put the music up and let them be themselves and enjoy themselves. And boots on, what we always say, boots on, switched on. <laughs> And say yes. Bula Vidaka. <laughs> yeah. Keep it but no cover. Relax, no, uh, cover. Relax. no cover. No and, cover before. And Kela is back. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Kela, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. No worries. We understand some people have uh, Wi Fi issues. Uh, uh, and, and to the audience out there, and for, for you guys as well, for your information, we had someone uh, before walking a couple of kilometers just to get a phone signal to be on the show. So we've. We've gone through this. Oh, I think the best was the person was on a train while going live with us. So oh, it's wow. fine, Kayla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of effort being put in. So yeah, no worries. Yeah. Good. So yeah, anyway, um, you know, talking about the um uh the this the the, the 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 coaches head the, the the head space, what coaches are going through right now. You and McIntosh uh, said just now he is trying not to put uh, you know uh, pressure to the team i think uh, and he said that the pressure is on these big teams like and probably kayla um you were part of a big team the new zealand team a lot of, i'm sure a lot of these teams uh, especially the small small nations when they go against new zealand there's some you know fear but on your side when you go against all these other teams or probably against new, uh, australia is there a fear of of losing at the end of the day? Okay, like, so no. Oh, she's oh, gone no, again. Okay. Oh, there we go. Hello. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. I think if you go with half, so. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're fine, you're fine, no, you're fine. Okay, okay, no, you're fine, you're fine. Oh. You're good. Okay, you're fine, and you got cut off again. Okay, now you're fine. Okay, now you're fine. Okay, cool. Yes, continue, please. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think obviously with our resources, the, the mental prep and the mental side is a big key that we're quite lucky to tap into. So I think if you go in thinking you've already lost, you probably already have. So for us, it was, yeah, we don't think about the outcome. It's more, you know, the process of, of the actual game. So, and the outcome takes care of itself. So I guess for the Olympics as well, it's, it's a different tournament. It's two games over three days. Uh, so in terms of prep, there's like a five to six hour gap in between each games and that in itself is mentally, you know, uh, um, something different as well that people haven't gone through. So, yeah, I mean, it's one game at a time and that's how, how we see it and how we, well, the black like, ferns of go through every, every tournament and every game. Game is, is one game at a time so yeah it's um it's tough but it is a different tournament um a one-off like Lottie said pinnacle event um but for for it's just trying not to get caught up in all the all the big stuff but one game at a time yeah for sure for sure i think uh, uh you guys have said the same thing i think all of you share the same sentiment one game at a time um if you go to any tournament and uh, uh Lottie, is it is it the same sentiment that you guys bring uh, even at probably the seven series, the world seven series, is it the same sentiment or uh, that you guys bring bring to one game at a time, or is it uh, is the Olympics different than any other tournament? How would you treat? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it is, it is, it is one game at a time. Uh, in sevens rugby, uh, now it's very competitive. You can easily trip up, uh, you know, in the pool stages. So. Uh, I looked at it similar to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is probably similar to, to the Olympics. It's a three days uh, uh, tournament. So, and what Kelo is saying, it is, it is very challenging when you have that five hours, four hours break, uh, which is not normal in a World Series. So there's a lot of things. It's, it's a challenge for the, for the coaching staff to, you know, to, to make sure the players are switched mm -hmm. off you know, f just enough so when it's time to put the boots on, switch on, they are, you know, they're ready to go. So it's a massive challenge and that's why it is, it is tough, uh, you know, uh, in for three days tournament. And another thing too, fitness wise, you know, it's a three days tournament. So two games a day. So that can, you know, can help the teams that are not necessarily fit, but very big and physical. <coughs> they can get away uh, with it, you know, with a, with a, 
with a style of a tournament like this. So it's very interesting. So can't really, you know, can't really pick, uh, you know, who's going to be, who's going to play against the man in black in the final, you know? <laughs> you are so confident. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Tasha, uh, you just, I just want to take back a little bit, just one step back. Uh, Tasha, you were in the repercharge tournament, right? And uh, what you saw in the tournament, do you think uh, the quality of rugby uh, will will be translated into something better in this uh, Olympics? What do you reckon? You mean, will it be a step up? Yeah, will it, yeah, will or... it be a step up? Yeah. Yeah, like us going to the Olympic rapid charge, it was already quite a high level of rugby. Um, you know, and it was great to have a chance to play against all of these different uh, teams that you don't usually get a chance to play against. Um, but then, of course, the Olympics, because they've got some of the top tier teams from the uh, World Series, it's going to be just that one. It's just be one more level. Um, like we we played against France, right, in our final uh, and our pool and our pool game in our final. And um, even though we fought back as hard as we could, we still have like, we now know where we are and we know what we can learn from them. And I think that was, that's what will happen in the Olympics as well. Uh, we can see that there's a, there's a skill level and a way of playing, for example, defensively or in their attacking styles where it's a, more of an offload game. So I think there's quite a lot to learn from watching this Olympics and see how these teams play. So that will be quite interesting. Yeah, for sure. Okay, now I think we are almost at the end of our show. Okay, Kayla, can you tell us that story again? <laughs> so do you no, miss your, your seven sisters? Please don't cut off. Get Peter to bring the Wi-Fi broken up. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay. Uh, what? A, a couple of quick questions, rapid fire questions, probably. Okay, you know what? I haven't written any. It's just at the back of my head. Okay, Kayla, favorite position. Me? Yeah. Favorite rugby Center. position? Center. Sorry? Center. Lottie? Uh, hooker. Hooker. Because <laughs> it's easy. Russia. Don't have to think. Center. <laughs> okay. 15s. Favorite position in 15s? Tasha? Outside center. Lottie? Full back. Okay. More, more room to move. <laughs> okay. Kayla? Uh, winger, because that's all I've really played in 15s. Favorite rugby player uh, of all time, Kayla? Oh, this is a bit awkward. Don't uh, say Peter. Don't say Peter. Um, Luke McAllister. <laughs> well, growing up, it would have been, yeah, Jonah Lomu or Carlos Spencer. Oh, damn, you've taken it. That was supposed to be Sorry. mine. <laughs> Lottie? Uh, I would say Christian Cullen. Cerevi. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. well, yeah, Christian Cullen. <laughs> uh, Tasha. Portia Woodman. Portia Woodman. Oh, there you go. Seven, <laughs> seven sister. <laughs> okay, last question. Last question. Last question. Okay, who's going to win the Olympics for women? Kayla. Black ferns. For men's? <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> Black ferns. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the New Zealand men's or Black Sevens. Okay. Lottie, I'm not going to ask you because I already know your answer. <laughs> Tasha? <laughs> um, Go, Tasha. Go, Tasha. I'm going to say Black Ferns for women's. Okay. I'm okay. not sure about the men's, so. Come on, Tasha. Come on, Tasha. <laughs> Should we just make it all <laughs> blacks across the board? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, say to Fiji, Lottie. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Anyway, guys, hey, thank you so much for being with us on the show. Thank you so much for being with us on HR Rugby Live. Kayla Aki, all the way in Auckland. Uh, Lotte Rakamula in uh, Bangkok, uh, Thailand. And Natasha Olsen, all the way in Hong Kong. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for sharing your insights, your views on the Olympics. And probably we can have you again on the show uh, when Kayla fix your, uh, fixes her... Yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> anyway. Oh, no way. Hey, you, know uh, <laughs> you have been great. Kayla, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, together with Lottie and Natasha. And 
to you legends we'll see you guys in two weeks after the olympics is finished we're going to have a, a review show on what happened in the olympics so be sure not to miss it till then i'm rod together with kayla lottie and natasha and this is asia rugby live take care goodbye <laughs>